supporting them now after having the benefit of being able to go back yesterday and, and, and leave? Yeah, definitely. You know, I always say it's never as good, never as bad as it seems. You know, um, you go back and, and critique everything from the week of preparation leading up to, to how we made adjustments in the game to how we played certain sets and that sort of deal. So, you know, obviously, you know, the big plays and penalties were the glaring things, but, you know, our guys did a lot of good things. You know, what stood out the most in, <clears throat> in the fourth quarter overtime was just the true character of the guys in the locker room. You know, championship strain, heart, determination, no quit attitude. You know, as bad as as bad as that third quarter was, those guys rose to the occasion and uh, went out there and won the game, and that was really cool to see. What did you learn about Wes Goodwin, and what did you say? Okay, now I know. Now I'm, you know, five games into my career, and now I take this as a learning moment or a teaching moment, or now I know this about myself or play calling. Yeah, definitely. You know. Um, you know, there's some def definitely a lot of things I could have did different, but um, I think the biggest thing is I didn't panic, and I think the guys just, you know, looking them in the eyes on the sidelines, they see that you're not panicking. You know, you got confidence in what we're doing. We'll get it fixed. We'll get it right. And uh, you know, I th I think just that calmness and and confidence on the sidelines, and, and we ended up, you know, getting things righted there at the end of the game, and. and uh, obviously went out there and won the game on the last play. It's not often that head coaches or even coordinators get in position group huddles, but you and, and, and Coach Sweeney both went into that defensive backs huddle at one point. What was said there? Yeah, just, you know, trying to get the, those guys to just believe in themselves and have confidence in their abilities. You know, um, the further you get away from the football, the more glaring your mistakes become. And, uh, you know, um, whether that's technique issues, you know, uh, how you play the ball at the top of the route, that sort of thing. So just trying to get those guys to calm down and, you know, just believe in themselves, have that confidence to go out there and move on to the next play and, uh, you know, just trying to get them to settle in. I guess was there a common thread in the secondary mistakes? Um, I mean, it seemed like every coverage we played, we gave up a big play in. So whether that's cover two, cover three, quarters, whatever it is, you know, just, um, you know, it, it, it was one out of each, it seemed like. So just uh, great teaching moments with guys. You know, I think they're, we have their attention. You know, they want to learn, want to get better. And, you know, this week's going to be huge for them to come out and, and starts this afternoon, you know, put this game to bed. None of those points carry over to this week. So we start uh, back, back at zero going into Saturday. So a, a new opportunity to go, go do it again. Sometimes we think about that mesh affecting the defensive line or the linebackers. But it'll look, just watching it at times, like the defensive backs were, or the corners were peaking a little too long and then someone had to go be by them. Yeah. Did you see that? Yeah, a little bit. There's some eyes in the backfield, no doubt. You know, credit to the, those guys. The, they had a lot of six-year guys, a lot of experience, and uh, we knew the challenge going in. You know, their receivers are older, veteran group of guys, and and knew knew how to play. And Sam Hartman's as accurate of a quarterback as we'll face all year. I mean, some of those throws were just right there on the money. You know, the touchdown pass to Trenton. The Toriano back shoulder fade, I mean, those are, are big time throws. And, uh, you know, credit to them for making plays and, and uh, you know, um, hats off to them. So now you get another guy that's been around for seemingly forever who's accurate. Yeah, got definitely. Some receivers that can go get it. Yeah, for sure. So we knew going into this, this season, this little stretch right here, you know, would be a good test for our defense. And, uh, you know, a huge opportunity to get back in the valley and, and, and write things. Wes, how do you rate your defensive line play so far? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not going to put a grade on it. Right. Um, there's some things we could, could do better, no doubt. Um, you know, kind of had some banged up guys, so the rush rust definitely showed on, on those guys. And hopefully we could get XT back, you know, TD. And Brian coming back last game as well. You know, hopefully we can get some con continuity in that group. You know, Rooks had the 
the wrap on his hand, and uh, those younger guys, Peyton Page and, and uh, Capehart, and and just learning to play the game and, and stuff. So hopefully we can start to get the chemistry and, and uh, continuity going in up front and really start to uh, dominate the line of scrimmage like we, we, we're more than capable of. What's been your assessment of, of Miles <coughs> in particular? And was there any particular reason that Nashville got to start the room over the weekend? Yeah, no, I, I think it just goes into the week of preparation. All of those guys are co-starters and everything counts. And Maskell had a solid game the week before. And I think this was Miles' best, best performance. And just want to continue to see him, you know, getting into conference play where, where hopefully we can get some better rushes on quarterbacks and, and uh, you know, just using his athleticism on the edge as well. Um, you know, I definitely t think he took a step forward this past game. Yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, looking back at this game, there were some uh, definite moments where we could have did some things better and got opportunities to hit, at least affect the quarterback, whether that's presence in his face or having the opportunity to sack him. And so we, ju we just got to do a better job of, of outworking the opponent sometimes and, and just, uh, you know, outcompeting him and uh, finishing rushes and, uh, you know, some good opportunities for those guys to continue to learn as well. I mean, I, I don't see that being an issue at all. I mean, I, credit to our offensive line getting better. You know, I think they just ha had better energy on that day and came out and attacked the day and maybe were a little had a little better mindset. But I, I don't think that's having an effect on where we are right now at this moment. Dan Williams and now another guy that's maybe not really a threat to him <coughs> and running all the time, but he's very patient. Definitely. He does not mind sitting there waiting for guys, and he will throw them open. What kind of challenge does he present with those wide receivers? Yeah, definitely. I mean, you got five in the slot who's played a lot of ball in 88. The offense kind of goes through those guys. And, and so it, it's another great challenge. Um, you know, unfortunately, you know, we couldn't pull it out up there last year. So our guys will have that chip on their sh our shoulders to go out there and, and uh, you know, get after it on Saturday night, you know, game, game day, night game in the Valley, top 10 matchup. We'll be juiced up and ready to go, no doubt. Coach, how important was it for Nate's confidence to make that play today? Yeah, I mean, it's huge. I mean, just you always t talk about next play mentality. You know, you're going to give up big plays playing in the back, back end. You know, you just have to have the mindset, hey, next play next opportunity and, and he went out there and, and had a had a great play on the ball to win win the game. What did you say to him during the game to have him in position to make that play and feel like he could? Yeah, just hey, you're our guy, you know, just that confidence and belief and just kind of reassuring those guys in between series, hey, move on, you know, dwelling on the past is gonna do us no good here. There's we got opportunities to go get stops and win the game here at the end, and let's let's rise to the occasion. As far as when you're having some mistakes in the secondary, obviously you want to be aggressive and blitz and do things like that. But do you have to reevaluate how much you blitz, or do you feel like it's just it's emblematic of what you're trying to do? Is you're still have to bring pressure regardless if you have some issues? Yeah, mo most definitely. Um, there's there's definitely a couple calls where hey. I shouldn't have pressured here. I should have just played cover two or, or whatever base coverage you wanted to play. So, you know, it's definitely, you know, sometimes you, you call a blitz and, and you're busted all over and you get a sack. You know, it's just give and take sometimes. And, and uh, you know, you can always go back and second guess yourself. But you, you call the defense, call the play with the utmost belief in that moment that that's the best thing to do. And you, you just sometimes you have to live with those consequences. I guess do you feel like you'd be as aggressive moving forward with the way the secondary is playing? Or? Uh, I mean, it, I think week to week we'll, we'll evaluate those opportunities and see how we, we attack uh, uh, opponent offenses going forward. Wes, how did Tyler come out of the game? 
I mean, he, 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 it was really cool to see him get back out there. And, you know, there's definitely some things he can improve upon and was rusty. But, man, he, his heart and just determination just really stood out. There was a couple times where he was not going to be outcompeted, and, and he went and, you know, just made, made plays after plays. And, and uh, we all know the type of character that, that he displays. And, I mean, it, it was really cool to see him, him go out there and have success. I know during his career, injuries kind of have, have lingered at times. Is he feeling, feeling good and ready to go this week? Yeah, as far as I know, he'll he'll be juiced up, no doubt. Obviously not the mesh this week, but to me, I, sometimes I call them, well, Will, we'll route you. Yeah, you know, definitely. Kind of the high game, they will, they'll run wide receivers out of it, the slot guy, the running back, I, whoever. So, again, what kind of challenge do they present offensively with that? They run guys in motion. And, yeah, I mean, definitely. Defend sideline to sideline. For sure. you. Uh, you have to communicate and adjust to every all their issues and problems they give you. But, you know, um, veteran group o offensive linemen, uh, four out of five, I believe, starters returning. I think their running backs are, are, are really, really good. Probably the best group that we'll see um, have, or have seen up to this point. They run really, really hard and downhill and have great vision. And uh, th that will be a huge challenge in, it, in itself. And then obviously, you know, Leary played a lot of ball and, and the challenges he presents. And then 5 and 88 are really, really talented receivers who will be a huge, huge challenge on the, on the back seven. How positive a sign was it to see from this team that, like, hey, it's an overtime game against a top 25 team? And how positive a sign was it that every time you guys got punched in the mouth, you keep coming back? Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's, that's the character of our team and the guys in our locker room. They're not, they're not going to give up. You know, they're going to fight till the end and lay it all on the line. It may not be perfect, but you're going to get, get 100% of, of, of themselves, and, and uh, they're going to go out there and compete and, and lay it on the line. Any questions for Coach from Zoom? Yeah, I mean, I, th I think they did a great job of, uh, you know, picking our, our pressures up at times. And, uh, you know, that, you know, credit to the them going in. I thought they max proed us a little more than uh, we expected going in. But, um, you know, we got to win the one-on-ones. You know, we, we're bringing pressure. Somebody's got to win a one-on-one -on -one matchup. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it, it's going to come down to controlling the, the line of scrimmage and, and eliminating the run game, um, as it always does, make, make teams be one-dimensional. You know, so we still got to control the line of scrimmage and, uh, you know, uh, eliminate the effectiveness, effectiveness of their running backs. And then, obviously, eliminating the big plays downfield. Um, you know, that's, that's been the theme of the year, you know, the 20-yard, the 20, 30-yard chunk plays in the passing game. And then we uh, we got to do a better job of being efficient on first and second down and get them into third and long passing situations where, where we can have the opportunity to, to get off the field. Anyone else? Wes, you talked after the game about wanting to be a, a press man team and trying to instill confidence in some of your, your corners and playing that. But do you worry about the opposite effect? If they, they're getting beat more often than not, that they get down on themselves? And how, how do you sort of help them? Yeah, most definitely as, you know, just varying our, our coverages and our techniques and, uh, you know, just putting them in position where where they can be successful at what they can do. And just, you know, I think that's on, on myself as the play caller, you know, taking stress off of them and not putting them on an island more times than not.